I'm the light of the world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all our friends, all our viewers, wherever they are. We take this opportunity to welcome everybody for this wonderful evening service, uh, Kisima Community Church. And our speaker tonight is uh, Reverend Margaret Njehia. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of us, wherever we are viewing, wherever we are watching. I know God has uh, kept you. I know God has uh, saved you. I know God has uh, set you apart so that you can uh, live to testify. And just as I said the other day, when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, they sang of the song of uh, Miriam and Moses in Exodus chapter 15. And I believe that one of these fine days, we will soon join together and sing the song of deliverance because of what God will have done for us. He is going to set us apart so that we can sing a song of victory, a song of deliverance. And I know that God is going to bless us. So welcome. Once again, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all our listeners, all our viewers, everybody who is seated somewhere in the house waiting to hear what God has for us. Once again, welcome come and god bless you so much our speaker this evening is reverend margaret and jehia she's the one who is going to uh, minister and then uh, thereafter uh, our reverend uh, uh, francis uh, chege will be here uh, to uh, conclude with a word of benediction and blessings so welcome again uh, may god bless you so so much as we start off thank you Thank you, thank you, you are. to our listeners. Uh, as you listen to the word of God coming to you live stream from Kisima Community Church, my name is Leverage Margaret J here, and I love the Lord as my savior. And I always say my heart is well. Even in the midst of every or the, the situation that we are going through, my heart is well. Amen. Amen. Um you will find our our message tonight, message of hope. Tonight, from the book of Luke 24, verses 13 to 35, my message is walking with God. Hallelujah. Walking with God. And at least at this time of the pandemic, I know he's with us. He has never abandoned his. Um, he's always with us and you always protect us. Shall we pray for the world? Heavenly Father, give us faith to, listen, to receive your word. Give us understanding to know what it means. Father, and the will to put it into practice. You are the Latin, the la there's the Latin to our feet and the light to our path and the strength in our lives. Bless us, O King of all glory, as we hear your word, and let it not depart from us, O oh God, for your word is you, and the word is you, and you are the word. Bless us, even to our listeners down there, wherever they are, O oh King of all glory, speak to us, we are listening. I do we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I said this is the word of God, and we are going to read from um, Luke 24. Verses 13 to 35. And I do read. Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was even uh, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together to all those things which had happened. So it was or in con conversed and listened that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, to the, restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is that? You have, with, you have, with me, you have one another as you walk and are sad. Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? 
and you have not known the things which, are hap which happened there in these days. And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before, before God and all people, and how the chief priests and our leaders deified him to, the, to, to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we are, go we are hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the top early astonished us. When they, when they did not find his body, they came saying that they had not seen a vision or angels who said he was alive. And certain of these who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow to heart to believe in all that the, prof the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at, uh, at Moses and at all, pro all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures and things concerning himself. That is the word God has given us tonight or this afternoon that you may hear what you want to tell us. I said it is a walk, a walk with God. Are we walking with God? Uh, for one, we are suffering, we are suffering a pandemic which, which has been a challenge to our lives. And I don't know, even after the, the social distancing, staying at home, you know, there's no coming out and there's no going in. Have we been uh, lo reading our Bibles? Have we been seeking God? Have we been in solitude with God to know what it is it? Or what it is it? Know that. This is something that has taken over worldwide. And when I read my Bible, in Matthew chapter 24, it says, at the end of the time, there will come a pandemic, or call it a pentilence, and it will, not, it will not heal. You know, it will be one of the things to show us that the end of time has come. But I don't want to disappoint somebody who is watching there that this is the last time. Because God himself, there's nothing that overtakes him. There is nothing that, you know, comes without his knowledge. He knows all this. And this is time for us to start our gap, to repent. And, to, and I always say, and confen confess the sins that we have done. The Bible says in Amos chapter 8 and verse 12, it says, people will go from, they will move from south to north, from east to west, looking uh, for a message of God, but they will not found it. This is the time for us to hear what God wants to tell us. Maybe that was, the, 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 the pandemic is an awakening, so that we may start firm. And God will know our stand. God will see our faith if it will waver by bringing the pandemic. But I know tonight we have a hope that God, I God is giving us. When we walk with him, uh, he will bless us. The terrible, or the terrible plague or the penitence will not catch up with us. And if it, it will, then we still have faith that God is with us and will walk with us. Uh, the Bible has told us very well that this is the time that Christ had died at the, uh, at the cross and he was buried. And uh, now uh, the, the, he has resurrected. But the, 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 the disciples did not comprehend what, God had, what Jesus had told them when he was in the ministry that I will die and in three days I will resurrect. Because for one, mother and other women had gone to the tomb and they did not find Christ. Peter and the other disciple, they, they too went to the tomb, and they did not uh, find Christ. Now it was like, oh, Christ did not reveal to us that he will die and he will never come back. But the only message that he was telling them, that in three days' time, I will die, and in three days' time, I will select, and, uh, and I will be with you people. But to, this was like, you know, he was telling it, to people who did not understand. When they were, they were in the ministry, they understood everything, and they were very happy working with him. Now we see now, after they ha this, this thing has taken place, the two disciples 
uh, the one we have read from the Bible, Cleophas, they decided to leave Jerusalem. How many times are we leaving our God because of the suffering that we are getting through this time, this tough time? We have abandoned our God just because we don't see him come and heal us. Because the, the, the many things that we are hearing is that this, uh, this uh, nation has lost such people. This nation has lo lost such people. This is the only message that we are you know, texting or we are receiving from the news. But I want, I want to say this. Have we walked away from our God? These two disciples decided to run away from Jerusalem. Let me say running away because they, they were running away for their lives because they did not know the repercussion, what will happen now that Christ has died. And the way, if you remember the way to the cross of Christ, how, you know, these people are ruthless, taking them, you know, Akina Peter to, uh, to, 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 to jail, you know, to sentence them because of following somebody who was giving a message the Jews did not want. We understand all this. So these disciples were running away, away from Jerusalem so that they may take refuge to Emmaus. But I want to say this. They, and they decided to go. This what did they know that Christ was alive. They were running away from Christ, but the Christ they were running away, he was alive. Uh, uh, the Messiah uh, was, was, was supposed to come and liberate the, the Jews, the people of Israel. This is, this is why, uh, this is the reason they knew about uh, Christ coming, that he was, was coming to liberate the Israelites from the hearts of the Roman Empire. But the thing is, they lost hope. Even after Christ teaching them every day, being with them all his life, the time he has been here on earth, they lost hope. Have we, lo have we lost hope about what, is the, the, what the situation is now? Have we lost hope? Do, you want, do we wait upon that Christ who has been selected to take over our, the gap, to start the gap, to take over so that we may not suffer. And these disciples, even after uh, walking with Christ, the disciples did not believe that Christ had died. You know, it's like they, now it came to them, it's like he did not die. He did not resurrect. And this, you know, of our, you know, encompassed them, you know, it, it was in them and they could not understand it. They did not know Jesus. But when they were walking uh, onto the road to Emmaus, the Bible tells us that Christ accompanied them. The reason Christ came to their lives when they were walking, and they did not still uh, uh, recognize him. Could be the time they saw Christ was the time he was on the cross, uh, blood oozing from all the, all the parts of his body. They did not recognize him because by the time, the last time they saw him was at the cross when he was full of blood. Now he came to their lives. But even Jesus kept them from knowing him. He wanted to hear what they know or what they would say about him. And they walked with him. Uh, he was very patient. Christ was patient to walk with them because they were telling him so many things of what had happened. And now, we, it's only that we have left, and they they tried to um, to narrate to Christ what had happened, how how Peter and the women who had gone to check uh, from the tomb, how what they found that they did not find Christ. Christ was even uh, patient with them. Uh, what I want to see is this: Do we recognize Christ even at this time? Do we call unto God? even at this time of uh, suffering, where do we put our God? Do we still have faith with him? The Bible says, those who walk with, uh, with God, they are blessed. Because when he walked, the Bible says in Genesis 5.22 that he walked with uh, Enoch. Enoch chose to walk with God because he, he was obedient. He walked with God in his direction. When God, whatever step, they made, they made it together. He was obedient. He was faithful. He walked at God's pace. Do we, walk, do we choose to walk with our God? Is our walking, even at this time, are we walking with God or are we walking away from him so that 
uh, we do our own. You know, let me say this. We are the Christians. And it is like we are looking unto the people of the free world, of the world, to help us to know how we are going to overcome this uh, COVID-19. Where, whereas we know that those who have faith with God, if we cry unto our God, if we speak unto our God, everything will be, you know, at par. Everything will be good. Everything will stabilize. Nothing will happen to our lives. But it is like we are looking upon people who even do not know God, who are not even asking for help from God. They want to do, you know, they are in the, you know, they want to do it fr from their scientific uh, point of view. They want to do it how they want it. Let me see this. When Christ died, his death actually shattered the hopes of the dr and the dreams of his disciples. You know, it was like their life came uh, to an end. They did not want to follow this Christ again. And they went out fishing. Since they closed the church, since there's no going out, we're in our houses. If Christ comes to your house and asks for a Bible, is it somewhere that is reachable? Is it somewhere where you can pick it and share a word with him? But just because we are told to go to, to stay in our homes, that, that, that was it. That was the end of everything. Oh, may God help us to know that. We should have his word because the word of God is God himself. Let us pray that God will always be with us. God will help us to know even to the roots or, or the ways that we do not know that he shall open up so that we may know his ways. Let me say this. Situations and disturbing emotions are Satan's most powerful weapons. This time around, the devil is at work telling us that your God, you know, he cannot. Your, your God cannot help you. Now the world is aiding. He will do nothing. This is the time the devil will whisper to you. But let me say this. Let us continue praying unto our God. Let's continue talking to him. Speak to our God. Repent and confess because we don't know what is the outcome. We don't know what God has found within, our, within us Christians. And you know, we will not know but everybody, if you, uh, you know, evaluate yourself, you know where you have gone wrong. When things get dark in our lives, when we lose wa uh, loved ones, when we don't have a job, there are so many people down there with no job, that's because of this thing. Do we lose heart? Do, are we hopeless? Are we sad? Just because of the things that I know, we are, and we are mad at God. Uh, these disciples were very mad at Christ because it, it's like they were just left like that. You know, it's like they wanted to be left somewhere. They can enjoy life once, once again, even, even if Christ was not there. But to them it was, now they are scattered. Now they are gone, everyone his own way. Is this the thing that is happening to us? Is this what is happening? Because we are suffering, yes. Let me tell you this. Let us put our trust onto God. There's nothing that is impossible with God. There's nothing that he do not know he's able. He's a God who is able in everything. The disciples were with him, but they still could not believe that he was risen. And imagine he was telling them that in three days I will die. On the, I will die. He don't even put it on the cross. He said, I will die, but in three days I will, I will rise up. This thing, it was like, it was being told to people who did not even understand or they were not bothered. Uh, at, at their, as they were going, uh, Jesus, when Jesus appeared to those disciples, he asked them, what is these things that you are talking about? Uh, and I said that they were, they were, their eyes were restrained from recognizing him. And they told Jesus all the things that were, were happening. And it was like, they told him uh, that Christ has died and nobody knows about him. But I want to say this. When we have God in our lives, uh, we don't have God in our lives now because we are preoccupied by this pandemic. All that we have, just to take a phone and call somebody and ask him, what, how are you feeling? How are you? The, the only thing we can post is, and I'm, saying, and I'm not, not saying that it is bad to give messages, 
But this is the only thing we are telling others, our friends down there, about the COVID. It has, you know, swallowed now how many, many, how many are sick and how many are healed. I tell you, let us not dwell too much on this thing. You know, let us let, don't let it overtake our don't let it overtake our lives. It's like it's a, it is the Bible of today. It is the Bible that we are reading. COVID. You may think it is a you know. It is a gospel because this is what we are talking about. Let us not be, let us not dwell too much on this monster. It will not help us, but only our God, who is a great physician, even after everything, who is there to heal, who has the cure. We may be looking upon people whom we think they are learned, and I don't say it is very bad, and I'm not talking bad, but I'm saying let us look upon the great physician who is able, who is more than able, and who can, who can heal and sustain. Amen? They were grieved and angry, and they were depressed. I'm talking about the two who are walking uh, with Christ. And the same life that we are in, we become grieved, we become depressed for nothing. If we, are, we have Christ with us, what else do we need? He has, he's calling us, even to give him our Lord, so that he will take it off from us. Why? Why do we feel grieved? Why do we d be dis de depressed? Why are we sad? Why are we angry? If God is for us. They called Jesus a prophet. Imagine, now from all that time, they knew this was Christ. And if, if you can remember the baptism of Jesus Christ, uh, a voice came from heaven and said, this is my son, Jesus Christ is there to save the world. And now when they were telling him about what had happened, they were telling the prophet is dead. You know, they don't even recognize Christ as, the, as their Lord and Savior. It, it, was not, it was now a prophet. It is how we are regarding our God. We're calling him prophet because of the thing, you know, he's not coming soon to heal us. He's not providing any cure. We are calling him now a prophet. They were telling him about the prophet. They lost faith. They had no faith with Christ. Our f is our faith gone down? Has our faith wavered? Are we shaken? Because now we are going through this, uh, this problem. They they even made Christ to be naive, as like as if they were, then they, the things they were telling him. He looked naive. It was not like he was the Christ they were telling him. I want to see this. Christ is bringing hope. Christ, when we walk with God. There is hope. And it came to a time they invited Christ because his daughter was a stranger. They have not even recognized him. They walked with him, uh, the Bible says, about three miles to a miles. And it came a time they invited because they thought it was a stranger. And that is good too. They invited him. And Christ, did, 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 he inclined to go with them. And when they, when, when they were together, uh, into their house with Christ, uh, they ate together. Christ broke the bread and they ate together. And by that time, their hearts started thinking now, the way the, the, their hearts were burning, the way, the, the, the way it's a burnt when they were on the way for, uh, from Jerusalem, they just they started to realize, wow, this is Christ. Are we waiting for something to happen? Then, let's receive Christ's bread. Christ is the bread and is the blood that we are going to drink and eat his body so that we may recognize and know him so that we shall not waver in our faith, so that we shall stand firm in this life until his coming. Our faith is built on nothing less but in Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Are we righteous before him? Our faith is in Christ. We know God is in control. This is the hope that is giving us. The Lord is in control of everything that we, we need not worry. He's already working through the situation. Already God is working the, uh, for the situation. It will not happen. We are not going to die. The Bible says uh, in, uh, in, um, in Psalms 119, we are not going to die, but we are going to live. 
so that we may proclaim God's goodness. This is the message again tonight God is giving us. We will not die. So let us hope, let us have that hope of waiting upon him and walking with him. Let us not succumb to the situation, you know, his presence is already here with us. He's with us. Whether we are in the church, we, whether we are at home, whether we are at our work, the Lord is here. He's with us. We will not succumb to the situation. We are not going to die. This is the message again I'm giving you. We are not going to die, but we are going to live as, Christian, as Christians. Those people with the faith, we are going to, to, uh, to proclaim his goodness. Everyone has to walk his, uh, his load to a mouse. In our everyday life, we are walking our Emmaus day. But when Christ comes, comes to us, we are going to recognize him in our lives. Whether we are in our Emmaus uh, uh, journey, whether we are walking however we, wherever we are, when we, are, we accept him, when we walk with him, he will be with us in our lives. Uh, sometimes I know we feel like we are alone because of what is happening. But I'm telling you, you are not alone. Christ is with us. God is with us at all time. He declared, I'll never leave you. Neither shall, shall I ever forget you in all our time. So where do we fear? Where do we put our fear like those people who are, who are unbelievers? It's like we are, we are walking in the same boat with them. But let us know that those who are in Christ will not suffer. He cares for us more than we can imagine. You know, if you are going uh, uh, in, in, you know, we are going in, in the places of other people, in the stores, at our place of work, and we still stand herald. What do you think? Do you think this is the shoe that we are putting on our mouth, the mask? This is Christ who is at work in our lives. Christ is at work at our lives. We have heard of so many people who have died and we are still alive. What have we given him? What have we done so that we may not die? Help us walk with Christ in our mouths, in our lives today. He appeared even to his disciples. The Bible says, and uh, at one instance, he found the Peter and other disciples who were in the, uh, in the waters, in the lake, fishing. But they could not get anything just because they had a bad on Christ. I want to say this. If you are with Christ, you will never lack. Until Christ came to earth through their lives, that's when they were able to get fish. My message tonight. Please, let's not learn away from Christ because he's our helper, our help, and our guide. May God help us. We need to see the risen Christ to experience his grace and to know him. In spite of the life challenges, we have hope. We have victory, and we have a God who loves us. Uh, the Bible says in uh, uh, in Monday 25 and verses 4, there were uh, five wise virgins and five who were foolish. And they took their lamp and their oil with them. But those who are wise, they had their oils, they had their oil and their lamps full of, light, of oil. But the foolish, they did not have. Let us walk in this life of a mouse with Christ, with our right full on. The oil is the, is the salvation, and the love is the faith. And these two will never walk together. If you don't have salvation, if you have salvation and you don't have faith, you can't, you, you will not meet the, 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 the bride. <laughs> Let me say that. You will not meet the bride. If you don't have the two, but these two have to work together. The oil and the lamp. Even if you have oil and you don't have the lamp, you can't make your way through. Let us have the two. The salvation that Christ gave us, the gift he gave us of salvation, and then our faith, the faith that we have. Let us continue working with it so that we will make it. Those five who are foolish never made it because they were, their alarms did not have enough oil. But the, the other five wise ones had to, they made it to the bridegrooms. To the bridegroom, I tell you, let us keep our hope onto Christ. Let us put our hope onto Christ and our salvation that He gave us. What we received when we got saved is what will lead us. That thing that we take for granted, 
That salvation we take for granted is what shall lead us to our eternity. May God bless us. May God help us to know that this is the word of God. And his word is powerful because the word is like him. May God bless you. Thank you for listening. Let's, uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We know your word is you. It is active even now. And it is strong. It, gives it brings back life to the dead. It is powerful, dear Lord. Help us to dwell on to your to, your, to that word so that we may know you more and more and more. Even at this time of the sickness, oh dear Lord, we, sh we will not succumb to it because you are in us. Help us, oh, oh even dear Lord, to walk in thy faithfulness and righteousness, O oh King of all glory. We thank you for your word. We thank you for everything, oh dear Father. Thank you even for our listeners, O oh King of all glory. I pray that God they have gotten the word and you shall, uh, uh, they, sh you sh they shall dwell in that word of God because the word is you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray to us and we believe. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, Reverend Jay here with uh, your good message, walking with God. Uh, one thing I noted in the message was in the midst of the confusion of these two people, Christ appeared. Meaning, in the midst of the confusion that we have right now, Christ is still with us. And he kept on with them until their spiritual blindness was opened. And they came to realize that God or Jesus Christ was still with them. So thank you very much, Reverend Jehia, uh, with that very good message. That is, in the midst of what we are going through, Jesus Christ is still on the throne and he is still with us. Church, Thank you very much, those of you who have been listening, because we are also reminded that in the midst of what is happening, we still have to make our church afloat. So, thank you for those who have been tithing. Thank you, those who have been supporting the church. God bless you so much, because we, it is our obligation to do that. So, today is Tithing Sunday. Once again, I remind you, uh, send your tithe, send your offering to 936-662-2783. 936-662-2783. So, uh, we have not yet actually come to, you know, a conclusion as to when we shall open the church. We are still watching because, as you have been reading, the number in Texas has been increasing by a thousand. I'm not trying to discourage anybody. So we are trying to watch. And uh, if you could listen to what they were saying, though they did open, they just said we must also observe the CDC rules, meaning we still have to maintain the six feet distance we are the masks. It is for your own good. So we shall let you know when we shall open our church. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to pray. So Thank you, those who have been watching. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and his blessings which surpasses our understanding and knowledge be with you. Those who are going to work, 
may the Lord bless you. Those who are at home, still waiting for blessings, may the Lord be there for you. Kisima is here for you. Continue praying for us. And continue remembering those of us who are still in problems because I know there are people who are still going through some problems. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.